Welcome friends to the latest series of Top of Down Under. Now Queensland has two contrasts from ice on the ground to the tropical heat. And in this series we'll take you from the southeast corner up to the far north. Now we have bent the rules slightly and started just below the border. I'm at Ben Falls Cabins and as you can see it's pretty spectacular. But more about that later. This is also a meeting point for the crew. Let me introduce you to the new faces. In the Red Patrol we have husband and wife team Casey and Nikki and in the Mighty Zoot we have father and daughter team Jason and Tia. So if you guys are ready, let's buckle up and click up some Ks. Ben's Fall Retreat is nestled in the stunning Severn River Gorges and is only 14 kilometres from the little town of Emmerville in northern New South Wales. This amazing location even has a restaurant. They cater for large groups and functions. The exclusive restaurant also serves as an ideal location for the ultimate wedding reception venue. Its unique rustic setting can accommodate a large crowd and floor to ceiling windows make the most of those spectacular views. But for most visitors, it's for a different reason why they are putting this spot on the to-do list. At the end of the property, and at the bottom of a decent four-wheel drive track, is a slice of Angler's Paradise. The two separate large cabins are both comfortable and located on the raised banks of the Severn River. The cabins have 240 power via a generator, hot showers and flushing toilets. And for those cooler months, the cherished wood fire heating. It's walking along the banks of the Severn River got down to minus five this morning, hence the gloves. It's a wee bit chilly, but um, magnificent spot. We've seen heaps of wildlife, kangaroos, fallow deer, and some stray goats as well. But with a river like this, surely there's fish in here. So I'm chasing a Murray cod. So gonna have a crack. The time has now come for me to wet my new spinnerbait. The Murray Cod is Australia's largest freshwater fish. They grow up to 1.8 metres long and 113 kilos. They like large flashy lures as they ambush feeders, but in saying that they will take a wide variety of bait as well. You need a bit of patience to constantly track your lure up and down the structures or the deep drop offs, they will come out and strike. In the winter months, they're more docile. They're a lot more active in the summertime. We only spent a night here, but by geez, you could take a week to really fish all these deep holes. I'd like to thank the Taylor family for opening up this area for us. And if you'd like more information on the cabins, hit the website. You will need a four wheel drive though, as the track in is a bit of a scramble. And I'll show you what I mean. to test out this truck. Haven't actually had it in four-wheel drive yet. This is the first time. Just in second low at the moment. See how she goes with that. That cabin was just a magnificent spot. Definitely coming back here and spending more time fishing those water holes, I think. This is the track out of the hut, fairly rocky with a big drop off to one side, some steep pinches, 
but they've put some metal tracks down to help you get traction. Now what a magical spot that was. However, as time is getting away, we must move on to the next location. And the next town is pretty historic. It's got a nice national park, as well as more four wheel driving. With Nick up, there is now a clear path for Tia in the mighty Zook. Okay, Tia, you're right to head up to the north before you start. You'll be right. Okay, we're going to head up to the north before you start. Now, Tia's Jimny is only a recent purchase, so we are all keen to see how this little pocket rocket performs off-road. Pretty intense coming up there. Had to go. I was, I was, you know, definitely in deep thought about what I was doing. <laughs> Had a bit of trouble there for a moment steering, but yeah, uh, no power steering. So yeah, it's a bit, bit heavy. A bit heavier. Yeah. No. Oh, well done. Thank you. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, it is four-wheel drive only into the hut, but that kind of makes it more appealing. And the cruiser is performing really well. How did I take it from a bog-stock vehicle to the beast it is today? Well, I'll show you how after the break. After 10 years and over 300,000 kilometres, my old patrol was regrettably due for replacement. So with much thought and deliberation, as you have seen, I have jumped ship to a 79 series Land Cruiser. Now she had some pretty big shoes to fill, so I need to kit it up and make sure I can get off the beaten track and home in one piece. For the last two series, I've run Ironman gear without a single failure. Hi Penny, welcome to Ironman. This is Simon Park and he's going to help me kit out my vehicle. At the moment it's fairly agricultural looking. But by the time these guys are finished with it, I'm sure it's going to be a really tough tourer. I think it's about time we went and had a look at what accessories we can fit to your car. Sounds great. Over the years, Simon, I've clipped so many roos, so without a doubt, I definitely need a bull bar. I think a bull bar is a great idea. Uh, Ironman has a full range of winch compatible bull bars. I think the next step is we talk about a winch. I'm thinking 12,000 pounds. I think a 12,000 pan synthetic rope one should fit you just fine. I love the synthetic rope. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Talking about kangaroos, Simon, I need to see them coming. What is my option light-wise? I think the best option for you would be a couple of HID spotlights on the bull bar and then we'll work on a couple of uh, LED light bars at the same time. Sounds great. More the merrier. I think so. <laughs> Being a dual cab, I don't have as much storage as I did with my wagon. Is it possible to put a set of drawers under my tray? Yes, there is. And we'll also look at putting a couple of toolboxes under the rear quarter panels of your tray. Okay. And then, depending what you're carrying on the vehicle, we can offer a different range of space cases. Great. Plenty of room for my recovery gear then. Simon, you've got a 70 series station wagon. I've heard that thing take off. What have you done to it to make it sound so good? Yeah, it does sound pretty good, doesn't it? I've fitted it with an Ironman aftermarket big board exhaust, and we've also put on an Ironman aftermarket small core at the same time. 
I love to hear the sound of my V8 engine, so hook me up for both of those. I'll be more than happy to do that, Penny. And while we're on it, why don't we talk about dual batteries? Okay, definitely need some sort of dual battery setup. I mainly use it for the fridge to power that, but also plenty of other things. Yeah, we have a kit that'll suit you just fine. Great, so if I take my vehicle into the workshop, can we get started straight away? I think it'd be a great idea. Awesome. Thanks, Simon. You're more than welcome. Do Dale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love. We'll see you real soon, eh? Awesome, Ben. Thanks for that, bye. That was my mate Ben, and I call him the Murray Cod Extraordinaire and that's why he's got a massive Murray Cod. Now he assures me that he'll help me catch my first Murray Cod, perhaps not that big, but at least get my first one. He's just given me the coordinates of where he's at, so I'll punch those in and we'll be there shortly. It's no wonder Ben can keep this place a secret. It's so hard to get in here. And I'm just at a camp now and it looks like the right one because there's a six-wheeler there. Not every day you see a beast like that. There we go, this is where they said they would be. It is time to hook on a spinner to the travel rod. This pristine part of the Severn River is also on private property and for four generations Ben's family has fished this location. Murray cod, some hard body lures out there, they're trolling behind quite nicely. We've had one hit so far and we've actually seen one on a rock, but uh, yet to land one on the boat. my first Murray Cod. So I've had a bit of an inquiry on the line here. Probably about five o'clock in the afternoon at their feeding time. Spinner on the end of this. Yeah, look at that. Wow, beautiful. See the spinner in his mouth there? Just on the surface there, I'll just try and bring him a bit closer. And that is a beautiful cod. I'll just grab him out of the water under the belly there to show you guys. It's a nice specimen of a Mori cod. Pretty ferocious feeders, and if you run the lure past them enough times, 
they usually take it. It's probably about two pounds. So small, but still a decent looking fish. It's about probably five o'clock in the afternoon, their feeding time. So I think we'll let this little fella go. But um, yeah, absolutely magnificent fish. All right, we're getting unhooked, I think. Time for this little guy to go back. Cod can last a fair while out of water. Going a bit. Oh, there he goes. First Murray cod. Woohoo! I fully understand why Ben wants to keep this exact location a secret. Sheesh. Cast in the half. My little piddly one, you ready? Ready to be wowed? <laughs> Oh yeah, straight over you. <laughs> mm. This tight gorge drops to over 10 metres deep, which is perfect for Murray Cod. <laughs> wow. They like the spinners, don't they? Wow. Is that the purple one? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Beauty. <laughs> Beautiful colour, isn't it? Mmm. Love the patterns on them. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's just in there. Yeah, that is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Must have a bit of a side swipe on it. Yeah. They <clears throat> always tend to hit and run. Okay. <clears throat> wow. Awesome. Freedom. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> He's still full of beans. And been out for a little while. I don't, um, don't really have to swim them. They just, they just go off. You know? Yeah. But the bigger they are, the harder they are to release. You've got okay. to sort of swim them a bit more because they've expended so much energy. You know. Yeah. They're a big fish and they're just big, full of fat. Yeah. It's like the big one I've seen your photo of. You know. Yeah. It's, They're more lethargic. We had to when... swim it for five minutes. Really? Yeah. No way. Wow. But he was good to go after that. Yeah. 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 yeah that's the ticket. This is fantastic. Switch another one. Yeah. <laughs>。It's really early morning at the moment. Good feeding time. Just trolling along in our little boat here. I've got a spinner on the end, and this is what we've got. Pretty relaxed. Maybe not. <laughs> there we go. Oh, check that out. We've done one pass through this area. We we're just turning around the corner here because the rocks close in. And pretty much as we slowed down, this guy hit. My combination with my rod is my travel rod with a spinner on the end. And it's a fairly short setup, so I can cast in some tight spots here. And the proof is right here. Nice little Murray cod, fat belly under there. Very healthy. Point of interest on the tail at his back there. He's had a little hit from another Murray cod, I'd say. They're pretty ferocious feeders, and they're also very territorial. So a big thanks to Demi and Ben for taking us out here. And they got us a Murray cod.
Happy days is away. <laughs> That's awesome, Marik. I love it. And what a beautiful spot. How many is that for the weekend? One yesterday and... And then four, 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 four today. Six. six cod? Yeah, very nice. Well. Definitely the area for cod. Beautiful. <laughs> Now that I can tick Murray Cod off my angler's wish list, we head north back into Queensland. Sundown National Park is over 16,000 hectares in size. It's characterised by rugged track rock country, sharp ridge lines and amazing panoramic views like we have right here. They've found over 130 different bird species here. Also, the Severn River and its tributaries flow through here, which you can access via walking tracks or rocky four-wheel drive tracks too. The Red Rock Campgrounds is the first on the road in, but my favourite campsite is at the far end of the park. This campsite's called Burrows. It's the furthest one into the park and it's walking tracks from here on in. Personally though, I think it's the prettiest. You've got camp toilets up there and you've got this beautiful creek. Let's go have a look. So even in the winter months, there's water here. And when the rains come and this starts flowing, it would be absolutely spectacular. But it doesn't matter when you come, it's still a really pretty campsite. No trip to Stanthorpe is complete without visiting a winery. So we're here at Ballandina State Wines and this is Robin. Robin, I quite like a sweet drop. What could you recommend? Well, I can recommend our fabulous wine called White Pearl. It is a very sweet white made with musket grapes. Okay, sounds so lovely. It, we've been making this for about 30 years, so it's tried and tested and loved by lots of customers. Okay. That is delicious. So Robin might grab a bottle of that if that's okay. Okay, thank you, yeah. In addition to the places we've shown you, the Granite Belt is famous for its prestigious wines and gourmet foods. And we've only just touched the surface here in Stanthorpe. There is so much more to see and do. I do recommend if you're in the area to visit Bonabanu Falls. I was here a couple of years ago and actually got to see it in full flood. Really spectacular. I've actually also heard a lot about the Apple and Grape Festival here. That's a must-see as well. It happens every two years. So if you are here, please go down, get involved. I guarantee you won't regret it. Now, speaking of experiences, Tia, how did you go in the Mighty Zook? No, I really love taking off the bitumen and getting onto a dirt track. It's been great. You just zipped up those hills? No, I've really started to get to know my own car and what it can do. No, you did really well. Well guys, unfortunately that's all we have time for, so stay tuned next week as we continue up north.